they were there. I wonder if he's like a pastor or something. He's one of the pastors. Is he? Yeah, he said oh, okay. he is. Dan, right? Yeah. opportunity to get to know you better, to dive into your word with open minds and receptive hearts, to learn something new. Your word says to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We want to grow in grace. We want to understand it more. It's an abundance of grace. Your grace is sufficient for our weakness. Where our sin abounds, your grace abounds more. We want to grow in that. We want to understand that. And it comes through knowing Jesus better, knowing you, Lord. You are the grace giver. You're the one who's pouring out your mercy and grace. You're the one who invites us to come boldly to your throne of grace and receive mercy and grace whenever we need it. This is all you're doing. You're working in us to willing to do what pleases you. Christ in us is any hope of, of glory. So Father, we just, we honor you with all that you give. You're the giver. What do we have that we did not receive? And when we did receive it, why do we boast as if we didn't? This is all scripture. This is what your word says. I'm just repeating your own words. So Father, take us where you want us. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. Okay. Amen. You ready? Yeah. Ready for the Bible study. Let's do it. Get fed with the word. Uh, You're fed with the word, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's go to, um, I want you to see something. I looked at this. I saw this the other day. I saw three verses that talk about all things. Uh -huh. You know what they are? It's uh, test, test your brain. All things. All things. All things. All things. Right. Okay. Where is that? Um, Come on. 
Uh, that's Second Corinthians five seventeen. Come on, good job. Okay, so okay, let's see. So what's another all things? Um, Come on. All things are of God. Oh, uh, that's the scripture. All things are of God. But oh, that's good. Yeah, it's a good. One. Okay. I didn't that, no. Okay. That's the one. The one other. Think of another one. No, I wasn't thinking of that one. I was thinking some ones that are specific. All things are of God, but, but I'm thinking about some specific good things we would want to look into and study. I mean, that's good. All things are of God, but that's in the same way. That's a new create. That that's in Second Corinthians seven five seventeen. That, no, that's no, all things are of God is another scripture or difference in, in First and Second Corinthians. I don't know where it's at. It is. It's following that. What oh, you just is? said, that all, all things are, are new. All things are And then God. he says all things are of God. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, those okay. are pretty much the oh, same thing. That. Okay. So that I follows, did. right? Uh, God graciously gives us all things. Okay, that's good. I don't Gracious. know. Yeah. Okay, he works all things out for good. Oh, yeah, all things. That's good. a good one. That's a good day. Romans 8.28. And then Romans, yeah, Romans 8.28. And then Romans 8.29 and 30, following that one. But see, that's heavy. That's a lot of all things. Yeah, that yeah, other yeah. one has to, an all things following that one. And this one has an all things oh, following. That's this. A, oh, that's interesting. He freely gives you all things. Right? If he died for you, he certainly freely. Let, let's, yeah, yeah. let's look at let's these. Look at these go, yeah. Let's go to Second Corinthians 5.17. Okay. I mean, you got to ask yourself, what is all, th I mean, is all things all things? Yeah. Or is all things just some all things? All things are of God is right. Right? right? I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah, that all things be of God, are of God. That follows that, that one. Just like we're going to look in a minute, another all things follows the other one. Oh, that's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah, the, the well, statue, you, just was, yeah. you just showed me that looking at this. Okay. Okay. Verse 17, it says, therefore... Right? Mm -hmm. five, Second Corinthians 5.17. Right. Therefore, if anyone, anyone, are you an anyone? Oh, uh, yes. Anyone's anyone. Right. Right. Okay. If anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ? Absolutely. absolutely. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, you're not an Adam. It's by faith. You're either an Adam I mean, or in Christ. Right? You're either in sin or you're in Christ. You're either an Adam or you're in Christ. You're either in sin or you're in Christ, rode with his righteousness. If you're in yeah. sin, then you're not rode with his righteousness. You're if you're in Christ... Right. The Bible says, "All those who have been sanctified, yeah. us, all those who have been baptized into Christ, have put him on. Have put him on. So you're robed with His right, because the Bible refers to Him as the Lord, our righteousness. Oh yeah, the Lord, our righteousness. So if you now put Him on, you are robed with His righteousness. Amen. Because you've been baptized into Christ. Uh, welcome you. You're probably." Hi, Can yeah. A Bible study or yeah, absolutely. I'm Stan. Stan. Hi, Stan. Hi, Stan. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank, right. thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Well, Thanks well, so much. We feel welcome. Don't want to disturb you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Stan. Thank you. Right. So. You were all things. Are, yeah. You were I like to piece this out word for word. Isn't that good? Oh, good. Okay. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you are a new creature, creation. Okay, like you created Adam, from the dust of the earth, he created him, right? Right. And then he right. took a rib out and made a woman. Right. Right? But he created he created them, right? He made her out of his rib. Yeah. He made Adam out of the dust. He just created them. Wow. Well, this is saying that you, now that you're in Christ, you too are a new creation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're completely new. Old things have passed away. Mm -hmm. You're not the old guy anymore, Carlos. Right. That old man, that's not you. Right. That's why he says in Ephesians, put off that old man and put on the new man, which is created after God in righteousness and true holiness. That's your new creation. Wow. You're created righteous and truly holy. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 4. Yeah. Put on the new, put off the old man, which is corrupt. That's not you. Put on the new man, which is created after God in righteousness and true holiness. That's, I, that's interesting, the connection between all things are new and that. And the, the the second verse you mentioned about put off uh, the the uh, old man, the old man, and, and put, put on, on the new man. New man. It's all, cause all, all things, things new are new. new. So we don't have two natures. Oh, you yeah. you don't have two natures. Yeah. The Bible says very clearly in Romans chapter eight. It says you are not in the flesh if the spirit of God be in you. Yeah. You were in the flesh. You were in Adam, but you are now in Christ. That's good. And That's he important. says, yeah, he says in, in, in yeah. Romans chapter eight. He says that those that are in the flesh, they cannot please God, period. Oh, okay. But you are not in the flesh if the Spirit of God be in you. Right, right. And he says, if you have not that Spirit of God, you're none of his. Wait a minute, I'm in Christ. I'm a new creation, so I'm his. Right? Amen. Right, right. So I'm not in the flesh. Right. That's the old man. Yeah. He's that's, corrupt. 
That's the stuff that it's, it's like it's like a dead man. Oh, it's that's like right. That's like why, that's why it refers to us being born again. Yeah. You have new life in Christ. You have it's a resurrection. You were dead. Yeah. Jesus said. He said. He, 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 Jesus said to those people. He said, "Let the dead bury their dead." Oh yeah. Why is that? Because they're all spiritually dead. You need spiritual life that comes through a relationship from you being in Christ, from you coming into a relationship with Christ. Our old man you was get, crucified with Christ. Yeah, you right? have new life. You're born yeah. again. Yeah. You resurrected. Right, right, right. Yeah. He says, he who has a son has life. Yes. He who does not have a son does not have life. You're still in the flesh. You're still of oh, Adam. Wow, wow. Okay. You're in sin. Yeah. You're not in sin if you're in Christ. It yes. says that in First, First Corinthians chapter five, uh, chapter fifteen. It says that if Jesus is not risen from the dead, you, Dylan, would still be in your sins. So many people teach that we have two natures, and it's not correct. They do. I know what they teach. Yeah. That's why I want you to see the Bible and then confirm it with other scriptures that support what I'm telling you. Right, okay, let's look at new. this, and let me show you other scriptures that support what this is saying, really saying. I mean, you're a new creature, and right, all, right, right. all things are new. Right. Put on that new man, which is created righteous. Dude, you're created righteous. Mm -hmm. It's not something you do. It's not a righteousness that you earn or work for. That's filthy rags. He says, our righteousness is filthy rags. Our righteousness is unrighteousness. His righteousness imputed unto you. Why do I need Christ's righteousness? You know, you know I need. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You know I need Christ's righteousness because my righteousness will never cut it. I can't earn salvation. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So, do you want to earn it or work at it, or do you want to just receive it as a gift? Receive it as a gift. Oh, buddy. Yeah. But what, what the Jews, they weren't receiving it as a gift. They wanted to do it themselves, right? Without God. Is that right? I'm glad you said that because that's very interesting. I was looking at Jesus and how he talked to these Jews because he was sent, he said, I was sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. So when he was speaking to these Jews, I noticed, it's pretty heavy, I noticed the four Gospels. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anywhere where he points them to, I mean, he points them, he uses the law to show you you're a mess, right? Right. Right? right? I mean, he uses the law in many situations. That one guy thought he was all, that, all holy and all that, and he said, dude, uh, you know. He, well, he was he asking said, a lot of questions, so he gave him the law. Yeah. And he was coming with pride, and God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He dished out the law in many places, many places. You know, because they he, were prideful, and they were Yeah, and, were and to show them they're a mess, that they need a savior. And they were asking okay? a lot of questions. But you notice yeah. that the way out of their mess at that time was through the animal sacrifices. And a lot oh, of them yeah. didn't okay? know, a lot That's of them what did. took them out of the mess. Yeah. Right. They had this Day of Atonement, they had to keep doing it every year. They had to keep sacrificing animals. They had two two goats. One would be slaughtered, one would be sent out. The yeah. one that was sent out was like a, referred to as a scapegoat. Yeah, that was taking your sins away. The other one that was slaughtered was the blood that covers your sins. Right? So the, right? right? Am I right on that? Those yeah, two, yeah, two, yeah, two, yeah. two goats. Right, 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 right. Right? One yeah. would be slaughtered, one would be sent away. And what he would, the priest would take his hand and he would press on the goat's head. Right. And he wouldn't, they would didn't all confess all their sins like we preach today just he just confessed the sins of the people the general confession yeah right? right from him from for the people he would be the intercessor to intercede for the people right and so he would press his hand we're confessing the sins of the people we're all sinners we need this and it would be there would be a transfer from the pe from the sin to the goat and the goat would take their sin and they would let one go and he would go wander off and take their sin away. That, that's a picture of him taking their sins away. Yeah. And the other one would be slaughtered and blood would, this would be the covering for your sins. And that would be good for a year. Yeah. Your sins would be covered for a year. Right. But well, what I noticed about Jesus is yeah. he talked about the law and you're burying you with it. Mm -hmm. But he never talked about the sacrifices. That's interesting. He, isn't that interesting? Yeah. He never talked about the animal blood. He never talked about that. He talked about his blood. This is my blood. This wine is my blood. Oh. This is my body broken. He was trying to get people away from the animal oh. sacrifices and back where they should be uh, to trust him. He didn't have any problem showing you your mess, using the law to show you you're a mess. He didn't have any problem with that. No. He, he, he did that, a lot of that. Yeah, but he was... Okay? He was he but he wanted to veer them away from their mess to him. 
because he's going to end those animal sacrifices. So he didn't want you pointing to that anymore. He wanted you pointed to him. Right, he didn't want to kind of encourage that kind of behavior going to the animal sacrifice. That's why he said in the same way that the, son, the, the snake was lifted up on a pole, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Uh -huh. That's the cross, the cross. That everyone who believes on him, you won't perish. You won't have to worry about, you know, going to hell. Right, he's right. Like, you can have eternal life. He's our priest and our sacrifice. Yeah? yeah. So he was pointing you to himself. He wasn't pointing to the animal sacrifice anymore because he's about to end that. But he did use the law to show you you're a mess and you need what I'm doing. And you need the, me. Jesus did the same thing when he prayed for a general confession for the people. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was our priest and our sacrifice. And he prayed. Oh, for that's good. See, yeah. I like that. The he connection. was both goats. But there was two yeah. goats. He yeah. said he's the sacrificial lamb. Um, he's the lamb of God that takes away, not covers, the sins right, of right. the world. Right, right. So he is that sacrificial lamb. He's not only the lamb that was slaughtered and killed yeah. to cover your sins. But he was sitting outside the camp. But yeah, but he was the one that takes your sins away. The Bible says he was manifested to take our sins away. He's, so he's not only the blood for the covering, but he's also the, 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 the goat that takes them away. Amen. He's all of it. Amen. Everything you need, you get in Christ. Amen. That's good. Isn't that heavy? Mm -hmm. That's heavy. Yeah. He's not only the blood covering, he's shedding the blood to cover your sins, but he's also the lamb that takes them all away. They're gone. Wow. He became sin for you. Amen. So you really are a new creature. Amen. Okay, so he says, therefore, if anyone is Christ, which 517, 2 Corinthians 517, what were you, you have anything to say? You looked like you were wondering about something. Uh, no, I, well, I'm good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want you to see what Jesus was pointing to. I mean, he would use messages like, hey, if you call somebody a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. You know, if you every idle word, you'll be condemned. You know, even angry, you can go to hell. I mean, even angry, you can judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he used some harsh teachings, but he's only doing that to show you you need you need what I'm going to do. You need me. Right. He was imputing. Jesus a lot of times imputed people's sins to them. He, at times you would impute your sins. At other times you would point to your faith in him as them not being imputed. He says if you believe on him, you won't be judged. But if you, you believe on him, you won't be condemned. But if you're going to go by the law, then your sins are imputed. If you want to stick with the law and the program you're under, then I got sins, news for you. Then you're, ju you're done. Yeah. You're done. As a matter of fact, those animal sacrifices, the only way that you weren't done was through animal sacrifices. But I'm going to end that. But if you so I'm not going to even entertain that thought right now because right. I want to point you to me. Yeah, even the animal sacrifices, that would have no effect if you're going to try to live by your own performance. If you're not trusting in animal blood even, then, then you're going to be done. The that's animal, a good point. The animal blood that's like that's covered. what he meant by what the yeah. snake lifted up on a pole. Yeah. That's is they had to look to the thing. snake with faith to believe yeah. that that's going to help save them. Yeah. Or they're going to die. Right, right. And many people didn't have the faith, it's and they faith. died. It's our faith. That's so faith. it's our faith in him being lifted up on a pole, him lifted up on a cross. Yeah. Faith in him, you won't perish but have eternal life. It's right, faith right, in right. a Savior, period. Amen. You know, and then God works in you to will and do what pleases him. You don't have to sweat that. He will help you live right. Yeah. Okay? If you put it on you and try to live right to earn it, to sustain it, you're going to get a blockage. The devil uses that against you. You know, he'll use the law to. Uh, yeah, he'll yeah. see the, the law. The Bible says the law is a ministry of condemnation. Yeah, and death. And the Bible says that the devil, he accuses their brethren. Yeah. He wants to condemn you too. He wants you to live under condemnation. God wants to take you out from condemnation. He says that there's no condemnation for you in Christ. Amen. None. Amen. The devil wants to put you under condemnation, and guess what? He'll use the law to do it. Yeah. Because second, uh, second Corinthians chapter three says the law is a ministry of condemnation. So if the devil wants to condemn you, what do you think he's using to do it? Law. Yeah, he does, sure. That's why we need to come out from the law completely and really trust in the Savior, really trust in Jesus we can't make and his own, power to work in me. We can't make up our own rules either because that's the same thing as trying to follow the Ten Commandments or if we try to say we try to add our own laws or pick and choose, that's not going to work. It That's not going to cut it either. Jesus yeah. is going to do it. Well, we don't never want to diminish the power of the Holy Spirit to work in the life of a believer. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Okay, works. that's why we're supposed to just tell people the truth. Yeah. Okay, like Paul says, I plant a seed, Apollos waters it, but God has to make it grow. Right. we got to give God room to work in a person's life to make that seed grow. But how is that seed going to grow if it's not planted? we got to plant a, a seed of truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. we got to tell him about Jesus and how good he is, how much he loves you. Okay, and sure, like Jesus, hey, if I needed to show you that, dude, you're not good. If you're trying to tell me, hey, I'm pretty good, if there's a heaven, I'll get there. Dude, that's why I might want to use the law to show you, dude, did you ever lie? 
Do you ever steal? Have you stolen anything in your life? You know? Yeah. Do you think God is just going to put little blinders on and just focus on your good stuff and not see the bad? Are you ever selfish? You know, you know what sin is? Sin is any form of selfishness. Any form. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sin is any form of greed. Any form. Wow. Sex, food, money, stuff. Oh, anything. Good. Any form of greed. Okay? Right. Right, right, right. It's You're any welcome. form of pride. Yeah. Arrogance. Thinking I'm better than you. Looking down on others. You know, or thinking you're worse than others. Showboating. Look at me. Hey, I look so good. Dressing up to try and look my best so that everybody looks at me and says, "Wow, he looks really good." That, that's showboating. That's that's a sort of form of pride. Or false humility. You know? Huh? False humility. False humility. Yeah. yeah. Dude, see, you see what I mean? And, and like I say, people who say think that you have to confess your sins to stay forgiven, they don't to have stay cleansed, idea. they don't have a clue either. They don't know what sin is. Yeah. Or they're lying through their teeth about confessing it all. They don't confess it. They don't. They either, you know, because sin is too huge. Yeah. You need to realize we are sinners outside of Christ, but we're not outside of Christ. We're in Christ, and in Christ I'm a saint. That's what Christ in me is that hope of glory. Any boasting, let's boast in the Lord, the Bible says. Bo boasting is excluded. If you must boast, boast in the fact that you know and understand me. That's what the Bible says. Lord. Boast in the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. So what I have, what do I have that I didn't receive? We read that last week. Mm -hmm. What do I have that I did not receive? And if I did receive it, why do I boast if I didn't? Everything I have today is a gift from God. That's grace. Eternal life is a gift. He says we reign in life. It says that eternal life is a gift. He says the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life is a gift. I received it. Thank you. Thank you. And let's appreciate the gift. Right? right? Righteousness is a gift. He says we reign in life by the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. Let's appreciate it. Thank you. Right? And, and the Holy Spirit is a gift. Oh, this is good. Right? Yeah, this is a gift. Because he says, yeah. he says, you though you're, Jesus said, you though you're evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He's a gift. And he says the gifts and callings are irrevo irrevocable. If he gave you the gifts... They're irrevocable. He's not taking it back. He will not take those. Jesus said, when I send the Holy Spirit, he will abide with you forever. He's not taking them back. He says that he gives you his righteousness. Well, I now rode with his righteousness. That's because I'm in Christ. I rode with him. I put him on. Okay, so I'm rode with his righteousness. Now, it's not my righteousness. Right? It's his obedience that makes me righteous. Right? Right. So, and so that's a gift. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And eternal life is a gift. So let's just... We need to just appreciate God for what we have and stop fixating on our junk. Uh, th this is how you're going to stop. You, you want to sin less, you need to do what I do. You know how I stopped sinning? You know how I turned so far away from drug addiction and crime and pornography and, you know, all, the, you know, all these things that selling drugs. I was just addicted to selling drugs as I was doing them. And you know how I broke free, so free from that, that it's so far behind me, I don't even think about that. I don't have those friends anymore. I don't even entertain those thoughts. I've been 25 years without ever breaking the law in any way, shape, or form, you know, outside of maybe driving, you know, because I drive for a living, so I can't help but sometimes speed, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, outside of, you know, things like that, you know. But as far as breaking the law, criminal, dude, I've been set free from all of that. You're clear. And, and you know yeah. how I did it? Because Not by trying to stop this, do that, do that. Uh, stop this and do that. Don't do this, but do that. I just focus on doing the right on, on grace oh, yeah. and the message of God's salvation on the good news. Focus on the good news and you will stop. You will sin less. You focus on bad news. You're going to sin more. Mm. You focus on sin more. You'll sin more. You focus on the one who is sin less. You will sin less. Amen. Okay. And that's where your mind should go. The Bible says, it says that Philippians 4, 8. He says, fix your thoughts on what is excellent, praiseworthy, the good report, the virtuous, the lovely. He says to fix your thoughts on the good stuff. He says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. That's where our mind should go, on him. Amen. Right? So right. this is why I, he says he'll keep you in perfect peace if you do that. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. I'm trusting in God. The righteousness he gave me, the Holy Spirit he put in me you know, the eternal life I have in him. I'm totally trusting in that, okay? And I entertain those thoughts. I constantly feed. That's what I constantly teach. Thoughts on that. Amen. You're a new creature. Yeah. Everything is new. I love teaching that stuff because that's what turned me away from that lifestyle, from sinning a whole lot less and loving God more 
Amen. Amen. Trusting God it must, more. It must work because you were really addicted. Dude. To it. Yeah. Uh, people think that this is license to sin. Dude, no way. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah. But the problem is, what are you feeding yourself? What are you feeding on? Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So this says that you're a new creature in Christ. All things are new. All things are new, Carlos. Right, right, right. You don't see it. You don't feel it. Because that's your emotions. You, you're trusting with your emotions. We don't trust with our emotions. We trust in what, who God is. God is spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. So word, we right? trust what the word says, what the Bible says, yeah, about what the spiritual stuff going on. What is in the spirit. Okay? Yeah. So if he says you're no creature, you are. Amen. If he says, you're sa if he says in, in, in Hebrews chapter 7 that you're saved to the uttermost completely, 100%, because he came to God through Christ, and he's always interceding for you, he says seeing that he's always interceding for you, well, you need to see that. And you need to trust that, that you really are saved completely. I have a reservation in heaven, it says in 1 Peter chapter 1. Mm. Dude, it wouldn't be nice to have a, know you have a reservation in heaven. Oh, yeah. If you've got a reservation in heaven, you're going to you're gonna be there. Right. You can count on that seat being yeah. there for you. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. That's what it says. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it says that. Okay, let's go to this one. Go to Romans uh, 8.28. So that's it. We all things are new. Mm -hmm. All things are new. That's pretty good. Okay. What is this? What does it say? 828. Now there's two all things in Romans 8. Oh, yeah. And they almost go back to back. You ready? Okay. And we know. Now he wants you to know this. Kind of like what he said. Seen. What, what did he say? Uh, he saves the uttermost. All those who come to God through Christ. This is in Hebrews chapter 7. He saves the uttermost. All those who come to God through Christ. Okay, um, because, uh, seeing that he's always lives to intercede for you. Okay, you need to see that. Well, you need to see this too, because he says, and we know. Right. Oh, we know. Like, 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 you need like, to see this. Yeah, we know. It's you like, need to know this. To know this or see it. That all things work together for good to those who love God. Now, don't exclude yourself from loving God. Okay, you either love him or you don't. Right. Okay, right, there's right. no gray area. Yeah. Okay? So don't, admit, don't think, well, how do I know I love him? Do I love him? I don't know. Well, the question is, do you know how much he loves you? Because the Bible says we love him because he first loves us. It says, it says that in 1 John. Love. Huh? Have an undying love, it says. Yeah, it says we have an undying love. And he says, I am not giving you a spirit of fear and timidity, but a spirit of love and power and sound mind. you got the spirit in you. Yeah. He, the, Christ in you is the hope of glory. So yeah. stop fixating on yourself and your ability to love him and focus on, does he love me? Amen. He, he says in and Romans, respond to it. He says that uh, we have uh, he, we have uh, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. So we know He loves us, and we, we love Him. Absolutely. He, Jesus even said, "Love one another as I have loved you." Amen. His love has to come first. Right. He says, "A new commandment I give you: love one another." This is a new commandment means new covenant. He said, "Love one another as I have loved you." So whose love comes first? My love for others, or His love for me? God's love always. His love for you. When he said we love only love God because he first loved us, whose love comes first? God's, God's love. love has to come first. See, so our love is just a response to his. Amen. So if you think you're lacking love for God, you need to listen to what I'm telling you, how much he loves you. Here's we want to see how much he loves you. He promises to work everything out for good. Amen. That's pretty good. Yeah, even the bad stuff. Look what he says, Romans 8:28. I know, we know that all things work together for good to those who love him. Dude, I was a drug dealer, a convict. I was crazy in sin, living violence, profane. Oh, there she is. Hey. Hi, Gina. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Are you okay over there? Yeah, I just dropped off uh, some stuff for the picnic. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. We're looking at some scriptures that go all things, all things. There's scriptures okay. that talk about all things. We looked at the scripture in Second Corinthians where it says you're, you're a new creature and all things okay. have Our become news. new. Cool. And I walked through that for about 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and now we're looking at this one in Romans 8.28. All things work together. Now, the key okay. word is we know. You need to know this. Right. Okay. Number one, like I said, he says for those who love God. Mm -hmm. A Christian or believer should never question their love for God. 
Don't ever question that. Because it says we love him because he first loved us. Right? Even says that we're supposed to love others the way he loves us. Right? So his focus on his love for you. That's why I love preaching on the love of God. Because that's centerpiece. That's my, he's, Romans 3, 3, uh, 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 John 3.16. God so loved the world. Yeah. Can we just preach that? That's one of the most, rec- most highly... Um, uh, Remember, remember recognize history. scriptures in the yeah. Bible. Yeah. God so loved, right? right? So let's just soak that up and say, God loves me like crazy. Now let me respond to that love. Okay, don't doubt that you love him. I love him, mm. right? Right. And he says that he promised to work everything out for good mm. to those who love him, those that are called according to his purpose. Okay? Right. Now, we question, how do I know I'm called? Oh, yeah. oh. We'll go to the next verse. He oh, takes you into good. that. Oh, that's good. To whom he foreknew, yeah. he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of among many brethren. He wanted to be the first of many children coming to God. Jesus, yeah. mm. the only begotten of the Father, was the first of many. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. us. Yeah. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also, there's the word, called. So you question you were called? Why would you question that? You were predestined for this. Oh, yeah. God knew this was going to be the you were going to be with him all along. There's your calling. That's amazing, huh? Right? Wow. So when he says he works all things out for those that love him and are called according to his purpose, that's you. Mm-hmm. You're not only called, you were predestined for this. You're not only called, but you were justified by him. Who's the justified? Those who believe that he justifies the ungodly. Right? Yeah. Right, right. He says we he says we now have peace with God because we have been justified by faith. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. So it's a package deal. The called are the justified. They're the predestined. They're even glorified, it says. Wow. It's, you get all of it. Yeah. So don't question if you're... Right? Right, right, right. Don't... Let me see. If you're going to question whether you're called... Yeah. Okay? Whether, if glorified. he only works things out for good to those who love him, those that are called... Well, if you're going to question where you're not called, where you're called, well, let me ask you, are you justified? That's a good point, because if you're called, you're justified. Yeah. yeah. See, I love how he doesn't leave you hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it's almost like he's asking questions, but he gives you the answers. Yeah. yeah. Right? He does that all through, throughout the rest of this book, this chapter eight. Yeah. So don't he, doubt his love. Yeah. yeah. Don't doubt his love. Don't doubt your calling. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. And don't doubt for your glorification either. Don't doubt you're going home. That's yeah. what glorification is. Right. He says those that are called are also glorified. Wow. Yeah. So don't doubt any of it. Yeah. That's what faith is. It should remove all doubt. Yeah, yeah our faith glorifies him. Right? Our faith glorifies him. Isn't it right? Yeah. That's yeah. why that's why he says it's faith that pleases God. He says without faith you can't please him. Who? Wow. Verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? Okay, here comes another all things. True. Remember we're looking at the all things. Yeah. We just saw that you're a new creature and all things are new. We just saw in Romans in, in 20, verse 28 that we know all things work together. All things work together for good to those who love him. Mm-hmm. So you're a new creature. All things are new. Right? Mm-hmm. We know that all things are going to work together for good. Yes. Right? Are you feeling me? Yeah. Yes. Watch this. If this doesn't do it for you, I don't know what will. Uh-huh. Okay. If God is for us, verse 31. Yeah. If God is for us, who could be against us? Yes. Okay. Now there's an if there. But he answers the if. He, oh, he wants you to yes. get rid of the if. Yes. Watch what he says. Because here's an, he says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. See? So he says, dude, the question is, did he die for you? Yeah. yeah that's the truth. That's the only if. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. if God be for us, who could be against us? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. did he die for you? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Then there's no if. Then he's for you. Because what does he say? He died for us. Look at the for us. Okay, in verse 31, he says, What shall we say to things like this? If God is for us, right? Mm-hmm. Verse 32, He did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us. You see the for us? Yeah. I highlighted that. Yeah. See? So we move the if. Because he died for us. If God be for us, well, he died for us. So he is for us. Amen. Right? Amen. How shall he not with him freely give us there it is again all things yeah, all things so what else i mean right give us everything, everything uh, right 
Okay, so your new creature, all things are new. He promises to work all things out for good. And he says right here, he says, if he died for you, won't he certainly freely give you all things? Mm -hmm. Dude, you don't have to worry about nothing. You're provided right. for. Yes. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. It's like a billionaire. I mean, God, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Yeah. It's like you're a son of a, of a billionaire. Okay, is he going to make sure that my son is provided for? Hello? Absolutely, yeah. Ka-ching! He's going to go to the best schools. He's going to, you know, he's going to eat the best food. He's going to live in the best house. He's yeah. going to drive the best car. I'm going to take care of my kid. Mm. Why? Because I can do that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And is God going to do anything less for his kids? No. Jesus said it. He said, seek first the righteousness of God, and all these other things will be added. Right, right. Yeah. And here he says, won't he certainly freely give you all things? He gives yeah. us the bread of life. He's Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. He's your provider. Yes. He'll meet your needs. Dude, I can tell you, you know, last night I went out, I did a job last night. I couldn't believe these people were throwing money at me. Wow. I, dude, I mean, I mean, uh, not last night, the night before. Mm -hmm. uh, these, dude, this one guy, he gives me, uh, this one guy gives me 50 bucks, and then I dropped him off. He said, you picking me up when I come back? And I said, yeah, they got me picking you up later on tonight. This is family. I took him to this opera in San Francisco. Yeah. And then when I come and pick him back up, you know, he, he, he gives me, um, he, he gives me, he gives me a hundred dollars. He gave me a hundred. This time he gave me a hundred. Right? Yeah, when yeah. I dropped him off, I was dropping him off at a, a park and ride, and I dropped these people off at this, their houses. Mm -hmm. and, and this guy, he gave me 50 the first time. And then the second time when I picked him, he gives me 100. And then these other people, yeah. and then when I dropped the rest of the people off, they gave me $40. Oh, he wow. gave me a 40. Yeah. That was $190 just in tips. Wow. Yeah. Not to yeah. mention what I made for the whole night. Yeah, right. That, that was, you know, a I'm telling you. And I, I'm provided for God, you know, but if you put God first, and really trust him to do what he says he'll do, he'll freely give you all things. You know, you seek first his righteousness, all these other things will be added. You don't have to worry about stuff. You're gonna start to feel pretty good just knowing that God provided for. Yeah. You know, I get sick, I, I, I get healed for the, of you course. know, hey, you know, things happen, you know. Uh, foot, something happened to your foot and it got Yeah, hurt. yeah, all kinds of stuff. You know, I've had all kinds of things that go on with me, but they get, I, I get healed, things get yeah. better. I'm not, not saying we always get healed because at some point our bodies do shut down and we don't get healing like we used to, Yeah. You know, right? I'm, I'm not saying that yeah. God just heals everybody. You know, that's, that's a ministry that a lot of people ha do. They preach this, you know, God, just mm -hmm. have faith and he'll heal you and everybody's healed. Mm -hmm. you no, know, at some point our bodies do shut down and, and our immune system doesn't function the way it used to. And then we're going to die of something. Right? Yeah. Everybody dies of something. Yes. Okay, so I don't preach like that, but I do say for the most part, God has been, been taking care of, good He's care of me. He's a protector and a healer. Takes care yeah. of me. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. And I trust him for that. Yeah. yeah. And when something does go wrong sometimes, and things do sometimes, you know, at the end of it, you go through it, at the end of it, he gets all the glory because you know it wasn't you. Purpose, yeah. It wasn't you who was doing all of that, right, right, right. who was protecting you, providing for you, that kind of thing. Wow. God gets all the glory. What does he say? He works all things out for good. You know what that yeah. tells me? There's always light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how yeah. dark things might be right now, yes. there is light at the end of the tunnel. He promises to work all this out for good. So I don't have to be I don't have to dig my heels deep in here yeah. thinking, oh no. Right. You know? I could say, Oh, thank God. Yes. You know, in the middle of the mess. Oh, yeah. We yeah. talk. We keep talk about our world. We think we talk about our world falling apart. You know, some people they say, "Oh, my whole world's falling apart." Oh, you know, um, Noah's world fell apart. Literally. Yeah. Literally, the whole world flooded, right? But yeah. God saw him through yeah. it. Mm -hmm. He came out the other end better than he went in. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> what a blessing. Okay, so you see that? Yeah. yeah. I want to, okay, so I just wanted you to see those those all things, those freely, they're, they're, okay, so number one, okay, so you're a new creature, all things are new. Can you believe that? Do you believe all things are new? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, if you go into the physical, you look in the, in the mirror, yeah. I don't look new, <laughs> right? <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> right? That, that's the body. Yes. Or you could think in your mind, I still have some pretty bad thoughts. Everything's not new here either. That's your soul. But the Bible yeah. says we're spirit, soul, and body. So when he's talking about all things are new, it must be... In your spirit. Yeah, with the Holy spirit and the bible spirit. says that god is spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth yeah. so we approach god with the new man that i am in the spirit where all things are new i approach god like that 
That's how you always want to approach God. That's how you know you can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace whenever I need it. That's how you yeah. know you can do that because I'm not approaching him because of how I think or what I do. I'm approaching him because of who I am in the spirit. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Are you feeling me? Mm -hmm. So, let's get to know who we are in the spirit better. Well, number one, let's look at this. Okay, let's go to Luke 18, 18. Luke 18, 18. This man came to Jesus, a rich man, right? My Bible is, it says, it says, Jesus counsels the rich, young ruler. Okay. So this is a rich, young ruler. Yes. Okay, now understand he's rich. Now, but he's young. And he's a ruler. So obviously he inherited this. He knows yes. what it feels like to yes. inherit something. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Are you feeling me? Yes. Okay? Because I doubt if he's that young, and if he's already a ruler that young, well, he inherited whatever he's got. Right, right. Whatever right. his show he's running as a ruler, whatever riches he has, it was obviously inherited. That makes sense. Right. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's heavy. Yeah. See how I can piece that out? That's pretty good. I wouldn't have gone. And, yeah. yeah. And, a, and a, a certain ruler asked him, saying, Hey, how are you? Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit? You know what? Uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt. It's a Church. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. I didn't see that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. No problem. Okay. Right? That's good. I'm glad she said that. I'm glad she said that. You didn't, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. You should have told me. I didn't want to say I'm anything. facing over here. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to put, the, put your fire Say up. something, okay. please. Okay. Right. I, I'm not, my back is to that. Oh, I don't see that. Okay, okay. You know? Okay. So, um, it says, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, see, he's talking about inheritance. He's talking yeah. about e e inheriting. Yeah. Which, you know what he's saying? He's saying, how can I know? Because, like, his inheritance... Mm -hmm. That he has? Yeah. He knew he it was coming. It. Yeah. His he knew father it. did. Right. Yeah. He just he just could know yeah. he's gonna get it. He knows it's coming. So what he's basically saying is, how can I know for sure that I can I'm just gonna inherit eternal life? How can I know I get it? I, it's coming. Yeah. How he can is, I, he's used to inheriting how, things. Yeah. So he wants to know how to inherit the eternal thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he's asking. And Jesus says to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. He says, you know the command, see, see, see how, see what I'm teaching that Jesus used the law? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. using law. Mm -hmm. I, I say that Jesus had two ministries. Some people don't like me saying this. Okay, I've heard, I mentioned yeah. to somebody that said yeah, Jesus, he didn't language. have two ministries. Yeah. I says, okay, well, he sure taught two different things. Yeah. Okay, they said, you know, I like to say he had two ministries. One was law and one was grace. Are we, the old covenant is law, new covenant is grace. We're not under law, we're under grace. Okay, so those are two ministries. Okay, those are those would be two totally different ministries, mm -hmm. to totally different covenants, right? But you got to understand, Jesus, he hadn't gone to the cross yet, so at times he would minister law, mm -hmm. and at other times he would minister grace when he was put it on him and say, "You trust in me, you won't perish. You trust in me, you won't be judged, you won't be condemned." That's when he's putting it on himself, okay? But here he's putting it on you. He said, what must I do to gain eternal life? And he said, this is what you need to do. Yeah. You know the commandments. Right. Do them. Yeah. Right? He says, you know the commandments. Don't commit adultery. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't bear fault. Don't honor your mother and father. And he said, all these I've kept from my youth. Okay? Right? Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Okay? Sell everything you have. Give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. Okay? Mm -hmm. When he heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he was very rich. Mm -hmm. You would think, Jesus, wow, Jesus, you turned this guy away. Right. Mm -hmm. You buried him with a whole bunch of doing stuff. Right. And, and, and he went away sad. Right, right. You have to wonder about this and say, Jesus, why aren't why aren't you helping this guy? Yeah, yeah. You know? But it's because the guy was looking for more, more, uh, something he could do to, to earn it. Mm -hmm. Something that he could do to make sure he's going to get into heaven. And the point is that there's nothing you could do in and of yourself to get, to, to be sure you're going to heaven. Right? Yeah. 
John writes that if you have the Son, you have life. And it's eternal life. You want to be sure you're going to heaven? Trust in a Savior. Receive Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? But he didn't even go there. He did say, come follow me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Of all this, you know what I take out of that? What you can take out of this? Mm -hmm. The follow me part. Yeah. Come to me. You want to go? You want eternal life? Come on. Did you, do you think you really want him to sell everything? To give it to the poor? Do you think that's really what he wanted? No, he needed this guy. The problem was that the guy thought he's been keeping all these commandments since his youth. And he doesn't even love God. He loves money. Okay, and he right. needed him to see that. The first commandment is love, love God with, uh, the first commandment is have no other gods before you. Mm -hmm. That's the first commandment. Mm -hmm. He says, I've keep all these commandments. He's not even past the first one. He doesn't love God. Yeah. He's, he's not putting God first. Right. Money first. Yeah, right. And so he needed him to see that. And that's what the law is good for, to bury you in your self-righteousness. Yes. The man was self-righteous and he needed him to see it. Right. You think you're loving God. You don't love God. You love money. Yeah. If you really didn't love money, you'd be able to give that aside and just come. Right? So let me show you you're not willing to do that. Okay. Go sell it. Give it all. Come follow me. He just wanted him to follow him. Yeah. But before he'll follow him, he needed to see, you're not keeping the commandments. You're not even close. Right? Right? And that's why he went away sad, yeah. because he couldn't keep the commandments. The yeah, first commandment was, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Nobody can. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. yeah, that is good. That's heavy, huh? Right. See, so let's look, go, go to, okay, so what I want you to focus on is inheritance. No, okay. In inheritance, yeah. you receive, okay, say you're my daughter, and I, I wrote a will for you to inherit something from me when I pass away. Why are you getting that? Because I'm your daughter. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, pretty basic, yeah. right? It's who you are, not what you do. Who? Yeah. yeah, it's his right? identity. Yeah. Most parents, I mean, yeah. they leave and they write out a will and yeah. they're not thinking, well, you know, was he good boy, was he bad boy? No, it's just they're my kids. Yeah, yeah. They just, I'm writing this will, if yeah. I should die, I want them to, have, I want to make sure they get what I have. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. you know, I'm giving it to yeah. them. Some parents, you know, write our will and they say he gets this, he gets this, he gets this. But, but the main person that usually, like, like me, when my father passed away, yeah. when we received his will, it was just divided between the three of us. Yeah, that's the way it was. Yeah, I, I, on the will, it was divided between the three of us. That's the way it was with my mom. Yeah. My mom left, you know, left my brother and me equal share. It, and it was because we were kids, his yeah. kids. Yeah. You don't earn it. Right. You don't work for it. You don't deserve it. Yeah. Right? Right, right. right. And, and, that's, what, for it. and yeah. that's what you've got to understand about what we're getting from God is an inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. God has just given it to you. That's why he says the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You don't earn this. Okay, go to Acts uh, 20, 32. This is heavy. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. Regina, I commend you to God. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to the word of his grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is heavy. The word of his grace. God and His word of his, the word of his grace is able to build you up. Do you see that? It's not the word yeah. of his law. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and, and, and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. All believers. Right? Oh. He says all those who have, have been uh, baptized in Christ have put him on. Mm -hmm. He says that we, you have been sanctified once and for all through that one act of Jesus. Uh, what is it? Hebrews chapter 10, 10. It says uh, through that, by which will we have been sanctified once and for all. Right? Yes. So that's, the, that's believers. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the word of his grace, not the word of his law. But that's heavy. Yeah. This is huge. It builds us up. And I commend you to God and the word of his grace. Okay, so, so here's God and, and the word of his grace is able to build you up. And okay. gives you an inheritance. Right there. Yeah. Does it sound like a license to sin? Does it sound like God and this word of his grace? Does that sound like that's, that's a license to sin? It sounds like he's able to build you up. Yeah. And give you an inheritance. That's how you get your inheritance. It's from God and the word of his grace. And it says, among all them which are sanctified. So sanctification is not a word. It's a, it's a reception. It's a gift. That's good. He's yeah. using the past tense here. Yeah. All those that are sanctified. Are sanctified. Yeah. 
I want you to see something real quick. Go to 35. I have shown you in every way, same, same chapter, chapter 20, Acts 20. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Do you see that? More blessed to give than to receive. Okay. Now let me show you something. God wants that from you. But we're supposed to be like God. Yeah? Mm. Right? He's more blessed to give. Than so he is more blessed to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. uh, are you feeling me? Mm -hmm. yeah. If he's telling you it is more blessed for you, Regina, to give than to receive, well, and I'm, I'm your dad training you, yeah. well, it, I must treat you that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good fathers lead yeah. by example. Yeah. So oh, if I'm, Right? Good yeah. fathers lead by example. Yeah. So if I'm telling you it is more blessed for you to give than to receive, that's me. I'm more than blessed to give you life than take it. I'm more blessed to give you blessings. the blessings than, than, than get anything from you. I'm more blessed to give than to receive anything. I'm, ready, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more blessed to come and die for your sins and suffer in your place than be getting anything from you. Mm. He did it. Right. Yeah. He went to the cross. He suffered in our place. Yeah. And, and whether they like it or not, yeah. whether they accept him or not, mm -hmm. he was more blessed to give than to receive. Oh my gosh, that's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. I'm getting too loud? Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's more blessed to give than to receive. That's heavy. That's heavy, though. Thank you, thank you. That's good, huh? See how I just take that one little verse and you expound on that? It's important, though. Okay, go to Galatians 3.29. Thank you for that, Dylan. You're welcome. I do get loud. But you get, you're so excited. You get excited, that's why. That it's all good. Okay. You with me? Yeah. We're talking about inheritance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I might title this "All Things Slash Inheritance." Mm -hmm. Isn't that title. good? That's a good title. All Things Slash yeah, Inheritance. Yeah. If you are Christ, well, let's back up. Look at twenty-six. For you are all. Okay, I'm talking to you guys right now. Okay. So yeah. Paul's talking to the Galatian church yeah. right now. He's right. talking to the believers in Galatia. Yeah. Okay, and I'm talking to believers here at Bridge Church. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, you ALCFers. Okay, I'm not t t talking to you. I'm saying for you, all of you, all are sons of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Didn't he say in John, he mm -hmm. said that all those who receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. He said that in cha chapter 1 of John. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. For as many of you who have been baptized into Christ, you have put him on. Mm -hmm. See, you're rode with his righteousness. If you put on Christ, you rode with his righteousness. He's righteous. Right. He's the Lord our righteousness, it says in, in the Old Covenant. The Lord our righteousness. Right? Mm -hmm. And it says, in, uh, it says in Isaiah 54, it says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Uh, and he says, for our, our righteousness will be of him. Oh, yeah. Our righteousness is of him, not mine. Yeah. Mine is right. filthy rags. Right? right? So he says, um, you put Christ on... There is neither Jew or Greek, neither slave or free. There's neither male or female. Yeah. Right? You are all one in Christ. Now watch this. And if you are Christ, there's an if. Okay? Mm -hmm. But that's no if for the believer. Right. Because you are in Christ. You're a son of God. Right? Mm -hmm. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. That means Abraham's ch children. Seed is like mm -hmm. heirs, children. Right? You are and heirs according to the promise. Okay? Inheritance. Heir is another word for inheritance. Yeah, that's what that's my point. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. So you are an heir. You, you, you got something to look forward to, something to count on. Okay, go to Romans eight seventeen. Back to Romans. I should have went there before when we were already there. I didn't realize this is uh, right there. There's a lot of good stuff in Romans eight. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? There is no Romans 8. Oh, you said 8, 17. Yeah. Yeah. My mistake. It's okay. Well, this is funny. When he talks about you being a son of God, he always talks about an inheritance. He's doing the same thing here. Whenever he talks about you being a son of God, he also includes an inheritance with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you inherit eternal life. Because you're a son of God. Mm -hmm. Right? right? 
Look what it says, verse 14, we'll start at 14. For as many of you that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Sounds kind of like what we just read in Galatians. Yes. Right? For you have not received the Spirit again to fear. Okay, so don't be scared. Yeah. Right? But you have received the Spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That's great. The Holy Spirit confirms with our spirit. I'm a child yeah. of God. Okay, if you're listening to any other voice, you're not listening to the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. If something is telling you you're not a child of God, that's the unholy spirit. That's the unholy spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is confirming that you are. Right, right. Are you feeling me? Mm -hmm. Right? You like how I say that? Yeah. Okay. And if children, then heirs. Mm -hmm. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And it throws this in here. I got to expound on this because right up here people say, see this. It says, if we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now people write and say, oh, see, that's if you suffer with him. You got to suffer. We've been crucified with Christ. We suffered with him. Yeah. Through our de that's our good. With Christ. But what I see here is you got to look at the context he's writing. At this time, these people were being seriously persecuted oh. for being Christian. Okay, if you look at the time when this was written, they the were context, suffering yeah. huge. Right. Paul himself, who was writing this, persecuted Christians, taking them to be yeah. tortured and killed. Yeah. There was huge suffering on account of you being a Christian. So you got to look at the context why he's saying this. Yeah. Okay, right, right. we don't suffer like they did today. We don't deal with the suffering they do for their faith right. like, like they did. Yeah, not in this okay, country. so that's why he's throwing that. I believe that's why he's throwing that in there. Oh, I see. So be ready to suffer for your faith because you will. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But know that you're going to be glorified with him. He's got right. your back. Right? Uh -huh. right? Yeah. yeah. That's how I read it. That's good. I just I like yeah. to take in context of uh, 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 the it's atmosphere that context. they were living in. Yeah. 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 Like that one scripture where he yeah. says, I die daily. Right? There's a scripture that says, I die daily. Paul was saying, I die daily. But he's talking about these beasts of Ephesus. And you know, every time I go out there, he's basically saying that uh, every time I step out the door, I face death. Mm, every day. Right? right? right. Every day, yeah. See, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Suffering. Yeah. Right, right, right. He's not saying, I die daily. People use that scripture to say, they, they, they put that scripture next to the one that says that we deny yourself, you know, pick die daily, daily. Huh? Pick, pick, pick up, up your cross daily. daily. And, and they, they throw that in there to say that we got to really be ready to suffer for the Lord and all, you know, we got to really be, you know, we got to, we got to die daily. When that, they pull that scripture out of context. If you look at the, most other translations outside of the King James, they say that I face death every day. Mm -hmm. It's not saying I die to self every day. Right. It's saying I face death every time I walk out that door. There are beasts of Ephesus. That means these people here in Ephesus want to kill me. There are, there are, there are yeah. Jews in Ephesus that would love to eat me alive. Right. And he refers to them as beasts of Ephesus. And I face death every day I step out that door. I could be killed. Yeah. Mm. He had to be lowered in, 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 a basket. in a basket out of a room one time because they were coming to arrest him. They, they hated him. They hated yeah. him. They did. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm mad. Okay, so you see this? Okay, so you see that. Okay, so that was Romans 8, 17, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, go to, um, oh man, doesn't, okay. Well, uh, let's go to, uh, okay, let's go to first, let's go to uh, Colossians 1, 12. Colossians 1, 12? Yeah. Oh, this is good, another inheritance. See? See? Yeah. Are you feeling me? Inheritance is mentioned in here. In this little chapter, in this little first part here, it's, it, it, it keeps coming up, inheritance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but uh, it says, giving thanks to God the Father. See, we should be grateful. We should yeah. always be thankful to God. Yeah. That, that's why people are suffer so much and, and are miserable so much, and they're not enjoying this abundant life that Jesus came to, to live. It's hard to be miserable when you're grateful. That's yes. true. You can't be, you can't be Are crazy. you feeling me? Yeah. You can't be gratitude. It's hard yeah. to be miserable if you're grateful. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Paul said, I learned the secret of contentment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. Secret and, of contentment. And the other verse before, how he says he built you up. But I think it's, he built you up by causing you to look up. Because when stuff happens and you're in the spirit, you look up for your deliverance or whatever you're needing at the time, 
of right. your suffering, that I think that's how he built you up, is by causing you to look up. That's so good, because if I'm looking up, yeah. I'm going to hear him saying, yeah. I'm going to work this all out for good. If I right. look up, I'm going to say, I'm going to hear him saying, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Right. Right? Right. If I'm looking up, I'll hear what God would say. Yes. If I'm looking up. Right. He's able to... And that whatever's happening down here is secondary. Yeah. Totally. He even says that. He says these trials, they're, they're temporary, you know, they, but they don't even compare with the future glory you're going to get from me. Right? right? So that's good. You want to be looking up. Mm. Because this is struggle right here. This is just temporary. All this is going to end. Right. But what you got coming... This inheritance that you can look forward to, this yeah. reservation in heaven, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor has it even entered the mind of man what God has in store for those who love him. Yeah. And trust me with this, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or even imagine. Mm. Even with this. Yes. Especially like with this. Right, yeah. right, right. You always said there's light at the end of the tunnel because mm -hmm. all things work together for good. Okay, so giving thanks to God the Father who has qualified, who has qualified, see that? See how I li like to land on certain things? Mm -hmm. oh. Who has qualified, you're qualified, Doug. You don't earn Amen. qualification. Amen. You don't work for it. It's not something you deserve. Right. He has qualified you as a partaker of the inheritance of the saints. So you're a saint. In the light. He has, past tense, delivered us from the power of darkness. You're not in darkness. He delivered you from that. You're not in darkness. Amen. He You're delivered not, you from yeah, that. Delivered from darkness. Right? Yeah. And translated us into the kingdom of his son of his love, yeah. in whom we have redemption through his blood, yeah. the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of, of sins. Yeah. See, there's a scripture that says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You ever heard that? I think it's mm -hmm. Psalm, what's it, what is it? Psalm, Psalm 102? 102 or 1072. 1072. Is it 107 it or 1072? No, it's 1072. Yeah. Okay, I remember that. I get it mixed I up. It's 1072, I promise. It's 1027 or 1072. It's 107, Okay, 1072. He says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Here he says redemption is the forgiveness of sin. Look at it, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Redemption is, through his blood, it is the forgiveness of sins. Yeah. So, and if he says, to let the redeemed of the Lord say so, we should be saying, I'm forgiven. Amen. We shouldn't be preaching, you gotta confess right. to stay be in forgiven to stay in or to stay right. forgiven. Or stay in the light. I'm yeah. supposed to be saying, yeah. I'm redeemed. Yeah. I have the forgiveness of yeah. sins. Mm -hmm. It even says in Hebrews, it says that it's eternal redemption. Mm -hmm. That means eternal forgiveness Internal you don't get yeah. any less forgiven than you already are right, right, right. he gave it to you he died for you to have it he paid for it right right he became sin for you yeah. Yeah. right yeah right and then it says he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation now right there tells you Jesus is God Amen. he is the invisible mm -hmm. he is basically he's what he's saying by he is the image of the invisible God he's saying you want to see God look at Jesus he is the visible image of God. That's heavy. I know. Jump back to Philippians. Go, go back, run page. I want you to see this. This is where our mind should go. Philippians 4.8. One page. Philippians 4.8. Finally, Carlos. You see this? Mm -hmm. Finally, Regina. Mm -hmm. Whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of the good report, not the bad one, mm -hmm. if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, this, Regina, is what I want you to fix your thoughts yeah. on. This is where I want your mind to go. Mm -hmm. And if you're preaching that yeah. we got to confess our sins, we got to, you know, we got to you know, be sin conscious, you know, the sin consciousness that, you know, that's the bad, that's fixating on the bad report. Yes. That's yes. thinking about the bad stuff. Yes. He doesn't want you thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And why I couldn't preach this so well is because that's what got me out of my rut. Right, right. I started preach. I started t learning this so much. Yeah. That this is why I love teaching this. Mm -hmm. Because I learned yeah. it so much and I see all the scriptures that tell me where my mind should be going and yeah. it's not there. And I see what helped me get out of that rut is my mind not going there, but here. Yeah. You see it written down. You see it written down. Oh my gosh! Just, that's just 
you're saying, oh, this is so true. And I, I and then I go into those scriptures where they're pre-taking stuff out of there to tell you that you do have to confess to stay forgiven, to stay clean. And I look at the context and I see, he's talking to people that say they have no sin. He says, see, people look at that, if you confess, he's faithful to forgive you and cleanse you of honor and righteousness. If you, look at that real quick. I want you to see this real quick. Look at First John. Let's see if you can see, swallow this. People land on, on this because there's an if. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's a requirement. It's conditional. Be, it's conditional mm -hmm. because there's an if. Yeah. But what you got to see is the context is the verse before it and the verse after it yes. are two more ifs. Okay. There's not only one if. Yeah. There's, three there's three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. So let's look at the ifs. Okay. okay? Yep. Verse 8. What, one eight? Yeah. Okay. Chapter 1 verse 8. If we say, see there's an if. If, okay. Dylan, if you say that you don't have any sin, mm -hmm. you have no sin, you're deceived, okay? And okay. the truth is not in you, mm -hmm. okay? There's an if, if you say you have no sin, right. okay? Look at verse 10. You skip 9 for a minute and go to 10. If you say that you have not sinned, that's like saying I don't sin. You yeah. never sin. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the saying time, I never sin. Yeah. The first time is, is uh, the first one is present sin. The other one is past sin. Yeah. So it's all your past history. Right. Not sin. Then not only are we deceived, but we make him out to be a liar. And the, see, earlier he says we call it, we we we, 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 um, we deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. Here he's saying we're calling God a liar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and his word isn't in you. Mm -hmm. Over there it said the truth. Verse eight said the truth isn't in you. And here it says the word isn't in you. Yeah, that sounds like Jesus. Yeah, that, that, Jesus, that's, the Jesus is the word. And, and he said he's the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. He's the truth. So he isn't in you. All right? Yeah. And he says the word is in you. The Bible says the word became flesh. He's the word become flesh. Yeah. Right? Right. So yeah. he, Christ is not in you. Mm -hmm. You're not a yeah. Christian. Right. These, are two, these are two verses yeah. that no Christian would ever say. Right. Well, I would never say I don't have any sin. I sure wouldn't say I don't sin, yeah. right? Or I've never sinned. If I say that, I'm deceived. Yeah. If I say that, I'm calling God a liar because he says we do. Right. We need a savior. Yeah. And in between those two verses that no Christian would ever say is another if. Two ifs, if you say, if you say, right? Mm. But here's another if you say, if you confess your sin. What does that mean? If I confess I am a sinner, yeah, it's, in. it's in response to those two outside verses. If I confess that I do sin, if I confess that I, I have sin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then I can be saved. Of course. Then I'll be forgiven and cleansed of all unrighteousness. And better than that, he'll impute his righteousness. Amen. And I'll be redeemed. I have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I will have forgiveness. I will have his righteousness. So to think that this is anything other than that, is some ongoing thing that we have to keep doing to sustain it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he keeps us. He sustains us. Watch this. Go to, go to 1 Peter. Again, inheritance. Okay, 1 Peter. See, if you take that to mean that I have to confess to stay forgiven and to stay righteous, well, I have no inheritance to look forward to because I could lose it mm -hmm. through lack of confession. Right. Right? I could lose forgiveness. I could lose Just my like righteousness. I could lose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Watch this. I think it's 1 4 is going to. Yeah. Okay. okay, let's start with 3. My, my book, my Bible in, it says right here, look at how it's titled. A heavenly inheritance okay. okay blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy are you on first Peter 1 uh, yeah. first Peter 1 3 okay first Peter 1 3 blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead now like Paul, Carlos's book, it says that it has we have been born again, right? Mm -hmm. And that how's your says that Carlos? It says all honor to God, the God and 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is bound for it is his boundless mercy that he has given us the privilege of being born again. The privilege of being born again. That's what he means by begotten us again. Okay. He gave yeah. you the privilege of being born again. Yeah. Okay, so you're saved. You're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And he goes into this inheritance that we have as being a child of God, being born again. Being born, you're born into this relationship, mm -hmm. right? To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled. It does not fade away. See? Yeah. So, so much for trying to confess to stay forgiven or to yes. stay clean. He yeah. says this inheritance, it doesn't fade away. It doesn't get dirty, right? Mm -hmm. It's undefiled, doesn't fade away. It's a reservation in heaven, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a true inheritance. Wow. Yeah. That's another way of saying you're, you have an inheritance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got a reservation, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through okay. faith for your salvation. So should my faith be in my confessions to be able to sustain okay. it? Or should my faith be in God, who through His power is going to keep me there? Yes. My faith is in the power of God, yeah, yeah. not in the power of my confessions. Yeah. Right, or anything. He yeah. says we are kept by the power of God through faith. Mm -hmm. So my faith should be in the power of God to, right. to right. keep me. Mm -hmm. My yeah. faith is in a, an inheritance I can count on, a reservation that I know is there. When you make a reservation, it's because you know you're going to sit there. Right. 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 Time is it's eleven forty three? So you get that? Mm -hmm. Where uh let me go through these so we got so we got time. Let's go through this. Uh John three sixteen. Uh... Now these are all in John. Let's, I love John. Isn't mm -hmm. John great? He doesn't go with any of this judgment things, threatening yeah. you with hell, or all these parables. And he goes straight to the blessings through Christ. Look at John 3, 16. Okay. This is your inheritance. Okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, you won't perish, but have everlasting life. So he says, you get eternal life through believing on the son. Yeah. You follow that? Follow it. Okay? John 5.39, or 5.12. This is a good end. It's not 5.12. Huh? It's oh, 5 sorry, I messed up. 1 John. 1 John 5.12. 5.12. Oh, 1 John. Okay. It's still John, but it's 1 yeah, yeah. John. Yeah. I'm glad you caught <laughs> me there. So what do you say? If you believe on the sin, you won't perish. You'll have eternal life. Okay, here's John again. This is your inheritance. Okay? Okay? We'll look at uh, 11. We'll start at 11. Okay. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Okay, you ever heard that? Yes. yes. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says okay, um, here's our testimony. Yeah, we've, I've wondered about that. What is our testimony? Because it says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I know what yes. that is. That's yeah. Jesus dying for my sins. Okay, yeah. so on my faith in that, I can overcome. Oh, this is good. But, he, sa but yeah. he says, and the, and the word of our testimony, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I always wondered about that one. Well, here you go. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. So if we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and this is our testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. Just trusting in Jesus. Yeah, yeah, just emphasizing Jesus as yeah. the cure. Yeah, Jesus is the cure. Isn't that good? Yeah. Th that's how we overcome. Emphasis on Jesus being the cure. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He's right. the solution to this problem, this dilemma that we're in. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son uh, of God does not have life. Now listen, you guys, I'm writing all this in my this letter, 1 John, I'm writing all this for you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know what that guy, that guy wanted to know. Remember we started this Bible study to saying the guy wanted to know, yeah. how can I know? How can I know that I'm going to yeah. inherit eternal life? Yeah. He's telling you this is how you can know oh, because good. you have the Son. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? right? That you may know you have eternal life, that you may continue to believe in the son, name of the Son of God. He says, I'm writing this so you could know it. Yeah. That man wanted to know, and, and he went away room. sad. Which that man room. wanted to know, and he, and he, he let him go away sad. Yeah. He went yeah. away sad. Yeah. 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 But he's saying you should never be sad. Because right. yeah. if you have the Son, you have life, and I'm telling you, it's eternal life. Yeah. Yes. Right? right? And you can know it. That man wanted to know, and he went away sad, because he didn't know Jesus. He didn't know Jesus. He said, "Come follow me." He didn't follow him, did he? No, he didn't. He was focused on selling everything and giving it to the poor. He said, "I can't do that." So much for following you. <laughs> <laughs> but here he's just saying it's better than that. Just have, just trust in me, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't have to sell everything, right? He did the, he could do that with that man because that man thought he was all that bag of chips. He had to break, he had to, he had to stop that real quick. He had to silence that real quick. That's what the Bible says the law is good for. Romans 3 9 says that the, Romans 3 19 says the law was given to those under law so that every mouth might be hushed and found guilty. So that's what uh, he buried him with the law, the commandments, and said, dude. And he says, Oh, I've done all this. So he says, Oh, really? Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you're not even close. You're not even past the first one. Your, your money is your God. Right, right. Right? right. <laughs> okay, let's look at if, uh, okay, go to John 3. Wait a minute, John 5. Uh, John 5. John 5. 24. Three. John 5, 24. Okay. Again. Here's where you, uh, the reason I'm going to these is you get life, and it's eternal life. Yeah. That's why you want to see it as an inheritance, because it's yours. Yeah. You can count on it. It's yeah. a reservation in heaven, right? Yeah. So he says, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. You shall not come into judgment, but you have already passed from death into life. Yeah. Okay, so that's a beautiful word. Again, you have eternal life, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, John 5, uh, 39 and 40. That's not right. What's the word? Maybe it's 6, 39 and 40. Oh, it's 6, 39 and 40. 6, Wait, one, 39. I don't know why, that's wrong. I don't know why I have that. John 3, 5, 3. Go to uh, 524. 524. Oh, we just did that. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, John 10.10. Uh, 10.10? 10, 10. 10, 10. Okay. We'll end with this. The thief comes only to... Uh, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yeah. I have come that they might have life, and that they might have it more okay. abund abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. See, I find this very important. He says a good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. We read earlier that he, in Romans 8 that if he died for you, won't he certainly give it, you everything else? Yeah. Right? So he's saying I'm a good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. And so the other day when I was preaching on what a good shepherd does, that um, that he's, he, uh, he keeps you... He, uh, what was I saying? I was saying that um, uh, he, uh, oh, what was I saying? I was talking about, do you remember, Dylan? I was talking about how he, um, like a good shepherd, he watches over you, he protects you, he guides you to water, he keeps you safe. Yes. Even, if you, even if you get lost, he'll leave the 99 yes. to go and search for you and bring you back. He, oh, yeah, he takes responsibility for you. Yeah. You don't take, you're, you're not responsible for your own growth. You're not responsible for your own. He takes responsibility for you. He says, I'm the good shepherd. Yeah. And he says, I lay down my life for my sheep. And he said elsewhere that if he died for you, won't he certainly with him freely give you all things? Mm -hmm. So he really is taking responsibility for this, your growth. Yeah. He, he really is. He's a good shepherd who does that. Mm -hmm. Right? He made, good shepherds make sure all their sheep make it home. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's your inheritance. He's going to make sure you make it home. Right? 
right. you have a reservation in heaven. He's gonna make sure you get there. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're my kid. You're my child. I've adopted you. I've accepted the responsibility of your growth. Right? Mm -hmm. Like when, a, when somebody adopts a kid, do I, do I, when I adopt a kid, if I go into adoption agency, I'm gonna adopt a kid, do I say, okay, I'm checking out, I'm taking a look at Regina, I'm thinking about adopting her. Do I say, well, can she cook? How is she gonna to get to school? Does she have a car? No. Right. I don't expect her to right. provide anything. Right, right. I'm expecting to adopt her and provide for her. I'm gonna meet her needs, right? right? I'm taking respons. I don't expect her to take responsibility for this relationship. I'm taking responsibility for her. That's why. That's what we need to understand mm -hmm. about God. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's good, huh? Yeah. He does, though. Right, right. <laughs> you know, a couple things happened this past week. Well, just living life. You know, I went to go see my mom and just living life, right? Mm -hmm. And there is so much anger out there. You know, can you can tell the ones who don't have the Lord mm -hmm. because somebody uh, accidentally cut in front of somebody oh, yeah. else, or yeah. you know, and these guys were in a hot rod. They got so angry. They were just, nothing happened. It was somebody's mistake. It was, it was just a mistake. Yeah. No. Okay. yeah, and they got so angry with this one guy. And um, and this other guy crossing the street just came really close to being.